support of housing, um, just uh, if people don't really uh, know the background on it, it was started five or six years ago. Um, the mayor at the time, um, Gary Corpin, was uh, on a task force on homelessness uh, that appointed by Premier Campbell, the Premier of BC at the time, and uh, they unfolded a, a master plan to try to make uh, the homeless issue uh, well at least reduce the impact on the community. And to that extent, they came up with an MOU, a Memorandum of Understanding, and uh, the province committed $50 million to the city, which is a 5.0 million, is a huge amount yes. of money. And uh, they wanted uh, 160 beds provided for that and uh, approximately five locations. And so that's basically what we're doing. This council um, adopted or accepted it from the previous administration, and we're carrying on trying to uh, achieve that same goal. And you know, um, the reality is that until and unless you're able to provide supportive housing, you're never going to be able to any, have any success with a problem. Yes. And yeah. you, it's housing first. You've got to get the people into a house where they're warm, dry, secure, right. before you can have any hope of success in, in changing their lifestyle. I think everyone deserves a, a dignified, sure safe place to live. And just because, you know, there's drugs or whatever, what, all of your punishment is to stay on the streets? Well, you know, I mean, there's a bigger issue too. And, it and, is, yes. And, and the bigger issue is really, it's almost to do with the charter rights. You know, I mean, mm. if a person has a, a certain orientation or, or religion, or all those things are covered by the, by the Bill of Rights. Right. People are, are allowed. There's no uh, omission of, of or allowance for discrimination, and yet the homeless and the poor seemingly can be discriminated against if they choose to move to an area, or if there's an opportunity to move to an area. Um, you know, should they be? A, disallowed should they be refused entry simply because they're poor, simply because uh, they may have an addiction. Right. And um, I think in this day of age it behooves us to do everything yes. we can to correct this problem. And you've got to start somewhere. Right. And that's what we're trying to do. So you're okay with the location, with in Uplands by the seniors home or? Well, you know, I don't know if, if I'm okay with that location. Um, you know, I don't know where there's any. The, the problem is we're so far down the road now that to change the plan at this point is to end it. Right. I'm okay. absolutely convinced that, that, and I think the majority of council is as well, that shares the same view I do, that if we don't uh, continue on with the program now, if we stop at, at this junction, that's the end of it. And uh, I think there's something like $35 million left in the, in the program. Um, the, prog the problem won't solve itself. No. And the only way you're going to solve it is with a huge amount of money. The taxpayers in Iowa aren't prepared to put up that kind of money. And without the province's assistance right. and without their cooperation and uh, without their support, right. we wouldn't be where we are today. And now we're within sight of finishing the problem and getting on with it. And I'm excited. I want to see it finished. And I think we can do it. Good. Yay. So another thing we can do in our three years, right? Absolutely. <laughs>